Andrew Seeley is executive vice president of the Wilson Center. He also serves as a senior advisor to the Mexico Institute. He joins us today to discuss a recent think tank summit that was hosted here at the Wilson Center. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, John. Us. Great to be here. So maybe we can start with a summary. Is this an annual event? How often does it happen? First time it's been hosted here? Any background you could provide would be sure. useful. Sure. This was a uh, the second time we've done this. We did it a year ago at Brookings and then this year at the Wilson Center. About 70 think tanks. Um, one of the, the secrets in the room is most of us don't call ourselves think tanks. We call ourselves policy research centers. You know, we're a memorial to Woodrow Wilson. Other people call themselves advanced study centers. Some of them are membership groups. But but any organization that, that really is in the business of ideas mm -hmm. is part of this group. And we're just trying to figure out how to how to do better what we're doing already. Yeah, the, the whole notion of what qualifies as a think tank. I was thinking, anticipating our discussion, and you know, a journalism is someone who, a journalist is someone often who claims to be a journalist or works for a news organization, but there's no accrediting or licensing. It's not like being a doctor. Are think tanks similar? It, you Very, just decide to be one? Very much so. And you know, we had some discussions when we were doing the invitation list, sort of who fit, who's in, who's out. You know, we tend to take a fairly liberal view of this, actually. There are groups there that, that probably others wouldn't think of as a think tank, but they have some piece of, of what they do is think tankery, and so we included them. Um, but it was a great group, about 70 groups. All of them do some sort of research and writing about policy ideas. Um, all do some sort of convening around this. All do try and, and move, put new ideas out in the public sphere in some way. Um, and it was a fascinating discussion, actually. It was good to see how different people do different things in different contexts. Geographically, where, where are the think tanks? Is it a largely U.S. type of undertaking or is it global? It is global. Um, this meeting itself was North American, so we had a lot of U.S. think tanks. That was the bulk. We had a lot of Mexican think tanks, though. We had about seven or eight good Mexican think tanks, and we had three or four very good Canadian think tanks, and there are a number of, of good Canadian ones. But there are think tanks around the world. There, there are think tanks today in China, many of them affiliated with the government, but uh, but nonetheless really in the business of, of trying to use ideas to, to shape policy agendas. They're very big in India. I just got back from a big think tank conference in India, and, and there's a, a lot of think tanks in India. Is it a growth industry? It's a growth industry, very much so. So, and, you know, and, and it comes out at you know, different places. Sometimes it's universities starting policy centers. Sometimes it's NGOs that sort of nonprofit groups that really metamorphose into to being more research-based. Sometimes it's governments that, that create a think tank side. I mean, they come from all, all different areas, but it is very much a growth industry. So, so what are the challenges that they're dealing with? You've been into the, one in, the conference in India. You've hosted the one here in, in D.C. What's on the table? What are people talking about? You know, I, I think a, a couple big things. I mean, one is, you know, how can you be effective in policy research? I mean, what can you do that's new and different and interesting and, and reaches an audience that can use it? Right, and, and, for, and audiences are different. I mean, some think tanks are very focused on getting things in the hands of policymakers. Others, I would say the Wilson Center is in this category. We, we like to do that, but we also like to shape ideas for a broader audience. And so, you know, we're focused not just on policymakers, but also on, on journalists and, and, and people who follow a particular field and, and, and mm -hmm. can shape the discussion. So that's one area. The other area, I think, is integrity of research and transparency in finances. And, and those I, I put together. Um, we had a lot of discussions around that, which is, you know, what do we do to guarantee our independence? The, what we do is, in fact, not shaped by our funders. Um, and agendas are not built by funders. They're built by the organization themselves. And, and also to make clear who funds us and, and to be as transparent as possible about this. And, and every organization has different ways of doing this. And, but that was a major discussion is also, you know, how do we guarantee our integrity and how do we to guarantee our transparency. Is it, would it be fair to say that this is among the most challenging times ever for the ideas industry in that audiences are so divided now? The, the revolution in the, in the communications world yeah. has created niche audiences and designer news feeds, and it's tougher and tougher to reach a big audience with ideas. It, it is. You know, it's both tougher and easier. I mean, that there's more competition. More right, there's more tools, exactly. I mean, so there is more competition. I mean, there are many people who can do what think tanks do, right? I mean, you have independent bloggers who are essentially, they don't need a think tank. They don't need an organization. They, they create their own blog, and, and in many ways, or a group of the people, middle they're doing... Gone. The middleman is gone, right, yeah. which is great. Um, on the other hand, it is, particularly for smaller think tanks, but even for, for you know, larger ones like the Brookings or Carnegie or the Wilson Center, you know, we, in some ways new technologies are, are a godsend, right? I mean, they help you reach new audiences and younger audiences and more diverse audiences than we've ever been able to do before. And for some of the smaller think tanks, because there's, you know, there's think tanks all around the U.S., all around the world, not just in capital cities, in, in a lot of smaller towns as well. Um, you know, if you're a small think tank and you're far from your capital city, having new technologies, having Twitter, having Facebook, having email, 
um, you know, you can actually reach audiences you couldn't have reached before. Yeah, at any moment, you're potentially global. That's exactly right. The, so is there agreement among the group about the role and importance of think tanks, or do people see their roles in the ecosphere of information and ideas differently? I think people see it differently. And, and you know, there's an agreement to disagree on this, which is, which is okay because we have different origins. I mean, there are think tanks that are very much partisan or at least ideological. Mm -hmm. No one really claims, at least of the U.S. think tanks, to be partisan, but, but certainly some are ideological. I mean, some are, uh, you know, were created to push a libertarian agenda or a liberal agenda so even if or a research, agenda. So even yeah. if their research has integrity, they have a point of view. They have a point they of view. They see the world in a certain way. Right, and, and they really see themselves as part of a larger movement. Mm -hmm. um, others are, you know, like the Wilson Center, try and, and, and span different communities and different ways of looking at the world and try and be a, a, a safe space where different conversations can happen. Um, so, yeah, I think think tanks are very different in that sense, and, and they have slightly different constituencies because of that. Um, and we're also different because of where we're placed. I mean, some think tanks really are focused on reaching people in government, and others are much more focused on a broader audience. And I think that actually tends to define um, different think tanks differently. But that doesn't mean we can't have the conversation. Some of, some of the most insightful ideas that at least I walked away with from the meeting came from people who came from very different kinds of organizations. And, and it turns out that because we all care about ideas, and we think ideas are important in policy discussions, you know, even if we have different purposes, often we can really learn things back and forth across different organizations. Is this level of integration or discussion or even potential collaboration something new? Is it gaining momentum? In, in the past, did people do their work pretty much in silos? It, it's very new, actually. And, and we have to thank the University of Pennsylvania's uh, think tank program has pulled us together the past two years. Um, Brookings played a huge role, I have to say, in, in the past couple of years, CSIS as well. Um, we had some good Mexican and Canadian partners too, but but really it's as new. I mean, we didn't. We there's always been lots of collaboration um, among experts at think tanks. I mean, experts at think tanks really do talk to each other a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, people that follow Russia, people that follow Mexico, people that follow science and technology, women's leadership. They all know each other. Find and, themselves and they, sitting next to each other at the same events I'm all guessing, the time. On panels, you know, and they invite each other to speak. Yeah. They write things together. I mean, it's a very collaborative field, actually. But thinking about the ideas industry um, as a, a subset of organizations mm -hmm. that have something to learn from each other um, in terms of organizational development, that's new. That's a very positive development. It's a it? positive development. The final thought, Andrew, is uh, about uh, trends, sort of the, where think tanks are headed, the next generation of think tanks. What, tanks, what are, has been identified in the types of discussions you've been having? You know, I, I think think tanks are becoming much more mobile, much more virtual than they were in the past. I mean, you don't have to be sitting in an office in a large building somewhere. Um, thinking great thoughts and publishing it in an elite journal. Um, that's probably what a think tank would have been 30 or 40 years ago. Um, so they're becoming much more mobile, much more lots of people who can be in a think tank even if they're not in the same country as the base of that think tank. So think tanks begin to expand beyond their walls. They, they generally do have walls still. I mean, they generally do have organizational structure and they have accountants and they have, you know, they have HR offices and they, they do tend to function as organizations. But a lot of the people that create content are, are not necessarily sitting in those buildings anymore, right? They're people who are affiliated in some way because that's what technology has done. It's really allowed people to, to participate in new walls, ways. Break down, break down walls. Yeah, yeah, and do research and do writing and do thinking and even convening across borders, right? Whether it's a state border or, or international borders. So I think that's a huge trend. Um, I think we're seeing more specialized think tanks, um, think tanks that focus on healthcare or education, mm -hmm. um, think tanks that have particular ideological persuasion. I think that's new and, and that's part of American society, right? We have increasing specialization. We're, we're a large large country, so that's very true in the U.S., but but we're seeing some of that in India and in China and other places as well. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us today, and also thanks for your thanks, leadership John. in the think tank community. I appreciate it, John. Okay, thanks. Andrew, thanks.